Welcome, gentlemen. <laughs> it's a real privilege to be here with you all. Um, picking on what we were talking about earlier, Matada. Um, consultants have a different way of working, but within the Saudi building code, is there a level of competency required, or is there a way to address these regulations to ensure that consultants and key players on the design team meet certain relevant competency levels in the future? Yeah, hi, thank you. Uh, in terms of the competency, we are talking about the Fire and Life Safety started globally as uh, one of the well-recognized organizations, which is NFPA, and it's recognized globally. But here in the Middle East, this came recently in the past years, like a decade or so, uh, most of the people have the old practice. For example, now we are getting into uh, professionalism and conducting the work. Definitely there is a competency if you have international firm or if you have a local firm, if you have a big a company or a small uh, company. Uh, the competency is about uh, delivering the work, how you re can read NFBA or Saudi building code. Saudi building code is a very heavy book that you can explore the requirements of different disciplines, different occupancy type and different requirements. So that's why if you are specialized, for example, in one discipline, Definitely there will be a uh, competency, for example, if you are dealing with hospitality, not like uh, healthcare, not like airports and so. Uh, so uh, what we like to emphasize here is that uh, the way of working, of reading the code has to be supplementary, ordered, uh, standardized. Uh, I encourage, maybe my thought you agree or disagree, to have a committee going with the deliverables to standardize the deliverables of all the buildings in Saudi Arabia have the same approach within uh, the guidance of civil defense and the, uh, 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 the uh, Saudi building code organization and also we have the uh, Saudi Council of Engineers as the authority of uh, licensing and approving these uh, uh, local consultants. Uh, these are the, the way that you have the competency where you have criteria for example uh, as international wise consultancy, uh, every firm has to have the level of performance where they do, for example, three rounds of review. Rather than if you have a small firm, they have only one engineer, it's only one round of firm. The professionality is and, and anyway, when you have a review, definitely you might miss something. Second review is a better, a third uh, review is the must uh, uh, approach to have as a professional. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doug. Um, I completely agree with his point. Um, I think ensuring competency in Vision 2030 projects is very critical, especially at the beginning, early stages of design, talking about master planning and the fire strategy report and the early stages of conceptual design. It's very important to get it right at the beginning so it wouldn't delay the entire project. So. Yeah. We are all in agreement. <laughs> so, Mustafa, engineers are more familiar with innovation coming into the marketplace, but how can we address the fact standards aren't keeping up to date with the technologies? That's a very good question. Um, innovations, new technologies, new, dis new systems, new devices come to the market every day. And oftentimes we don't have any problem with it. If, if it's going to keep us safe, then that's completely okay with us. It's only a problem when it's um, approved by one governmental entity, but not the other. I think we have in the market a lot of inconsistencies and contradiction in between authorities and whatever, you know, the Saudi building code says and the other governmental entity says. And that would um, create a lot of confusions in between everyone's involved and that's consultants, contractors, suppliers, and also the HJ. So I think that needs to be regulated in a way by the authorities. So I'd like to actually go on and talk about the SBC 201 and um, 801. Mm -hmm. And they are overarching, but how can the client have confidence that the entire project team have the competency and understanding to apply and consistently refer back to these codes and personal standards throughout the design, build and handover stages. 
That's a very good question. Well, um, the Saudi building code and the Saudi fire code, code is a very um, starting point. It's a very good starting point for any consult consultant. And uh, it comes to the interpretation of those codes and standards and the referenced codes and standards within within you know SVC 201 and SVC 801. So interpretation and also you know going back to the same point of competencies and whatever that one consultant or that one company have done previously would give the client more confidence of the ability of the consultant or the person to do the job properly. Uh, the Saudi building code started in 2018. And also uh, uh, in, uh, in 2019, the civil defense started shifting the responsibility of the consultants. So in terms of fire life safety, uh, globally, we're talking about trust. So whatever uh, is mentioned in Saudi code, the nine, I mean, uh, 801 and 201, it's about the trust that you cover all the aspect of the code. And Mohammed, I would like to ask you to address a question that uh, intrigues me. Once the project moves into the construction phase, how can the fire engineering team protect the original fire strategy from being manipulated by architects and developers where escape routes, fire stopping, uh, contrasting areas of fire risk, etc., are concerned? First of all, I have some points on what my uh, Although I am not uh, civil defense representative, but from my experience and my knowledge, uh, a good way to, uh, to, uh, to be sure that uh, consultants and self-defense work well together uh, is to improve communication. Um, that will bring in self-defense and to add their input and uh, their requirements. Uh, and uh, also, uh, we, we are now in the, today, we are in the middle of uh, 2033. So it is uh, the largest and fastest uh, development operation in history. That's what I believe. Uh, so the consultant or uh, the public sector or public and private sector should work together to maintain all these tasks. Uh, consultants should know their responsibilities and uh, legal consequences. I believe that by 2030, all people here will be happy except consultant or contractor who make mistakes. Uh, and uh, consultant, I can say, consultant is like knife with sword and shield. The sword represents his knowledge and skills. And the shield is code and standards and uh, uh, policies. Um, remember that don't fight without your shield. You know, go to protect consultants. And uh, for a fire safety engineer to to protect uh, his fire uh, regarding your question, to protect the fire safety strategy, it is. Uh, some techniques, such as documentation and communication. He should communicate uh, fire safety strategy and uh, communicate it to uh, stakeholders. And also train and educate everyone in a project. They should know what, what, what's the work or they, sh uh, they should understand uh, the fire safety strategy and they should know how can they follow his requirement. Also, uh, regular inspection is very important uh, for a fire safety engineer to, to discover any state of change uh, in his design. And uh, third party uh, inspection is also important because their, their uh, report will support fire safety engineer report. And uh, change control, he need to write a uh, policy for uh, any change. Uh, any department want to add anything or change anything should go through this policy. And there's a, a lot of uh, techniques he can use to protect us. Thank you. So from what I understand, I mean, right from the start, 
everybody needs to know what they're working to, who they're working for, and communication is solid all the way through so that the fire strategy is not missed and the qualities, the compliances are always applied consistently. Gentlemen, do you have anything you would like to add to that? Well, uh, I cannot disagree more, but uh, to add to my colleague, uh, uh, for the consultancy, uh, there are three stages. There is a design uh, approval uh, to uh, issue the construction permit. Then there is the uh, supervision scope, and then there is the testing commissioning. Uh, the challenge we face in Saudi Arabia in terms of uh, the gaps from uh, competency from a vendor to vendor that is the challenge facing these requirements and forcing the owner to commit to it. Most of the owners will go with a good consultants to do the design for the entity and then for the supervision either they escape it or they will go with another consultant who's cheaper uh, just in order to save their money which will not gain the trust that that consultant will fulfill all the requirements brought in the design so the challenge that we need to have kind of uh, a strong competency toward 2030 as a vision of saudi arabia that uh, we guide all the consultants to follow the processes from uh, uh, mandated by civil defense that you have uh, consultants in all the three stages and the preferred option is to have the same consultant goes to the uh, scope of all the three stages for a better enforcing the requirements that the consultants as a liability that he put the requirements in the first place he will make sure that he hand over the project as it is basically covers what I was going to ask you about who would be ultimately responsible for making sure that there are robust checks. So if you have continuity through the team, you can identify responsibility along the way. Thank you. So who, who should be signing off and commissioning the inspections? Who should be responsible for that? Yeah, as I mentioned uh, previously, civil defense was on charge of the uh, complete processes and also the review and issuing the certificate. Nowadays, since 2019, the responsibility has been shifted to the consultant. So civil defense put the trust on the consultant that the consultants will hand over this commission, the, uh, the assets or the entity or the building in order to comply with Saudi building code and the global uh, standard. So the consultants held responsible 100%. Uh, civil defense are the supervision or the upper umbrella that these consultants work under civil defense for supervision. However, all the details, single details, is run by the consultants. That's why uh, the responsibility 100% rely on the uh, consultants. What we are talking about in terms of uh, what we can do as for solving this challenge that we don't know about the deliverables and the trust from each firm is that we have a standardized processes that these kind of uh, uh, level of details needs to be submitted. So what's going on right now at the moment is that the uh, evidence package submitted to civil defense, civil defense already have an approved consultants submitted that package. They will issue the certificate with uh, a random visit to uh, the entity. They will shift to the main high level uh, requirements. However, the details is run by the uh, testing commissioning through the consultants. That's why as keeping a record in order to go back to any history of the building in case that we have an, uh, a severe incident, we have to go to the record and check if that testing commissioning was done properly that's why when you do the fls report during the design then you do the supervision and you keep record of all the comments and gaps that you find and during testing commission we have to record every single compliance that they comply with and have it as a record because if you for example uh, uh put a requirement saying sprinkler is not required just having that statement without any reference and uh, uh, justification how you brought that requirement into place that you omit the sprinkler in the future civil defense or any colleague in the uh, consultancy firm they will find non-compliance but maybe it's complied based on his strategy but you need to make it clear for the reader even if he's not technical he can find out why you put that requirements in place
Does anybody else have any further comments at this stage? Yes, I, I think for being a um, larger project, uh, several defense and consultants, consultants uh, should uh, conduct their fiction and commission together. But for medium and small projects, I think consultants can do it alone. Yeah, completely. Um, the larger the scale of the project, the more supervision and more involvement from specialized people in fire safety that they should be involved in, in those projects. So um, in small projects, it wouldn't be as um, relevant as it is if it was large, complex and say the 20, 30 vision project so that's one way of it the other way of it um there is a lot of things in the code the saudi the saudi building code is very clear but it's missing a lot of um there is a lot of information that it's not in the code per se so um i think most of us have seen a lot of um questionable practices in construction sites and if you're trying to enforce the right practices in those sites um there isn't anything from SVC that backs that up. So, and in the words of consultancy, we, we operate within compliance and non-compliance, but if you go to SVC, there is only one chapter that covers safeguarding buildings under construction, remodeling and demolition, and it's only seven pages. So uh, maybe we should adapt more codes. Maybe we should implement and enforce more codes, but that's one of the areas that concerns me personally a lot. And uh, we've seen quite a few buildings under construction have fires in the past few years. So that's one thing that I wanted to comment on. So, yeah.